And uh, so, so Planck introduced the quantum term of action in a, as a mathematical device to explain emission and absorption of radiation. Um, that's very well known. But the person who gave it life was Einstein, who found that light quanta photons uh, to, on physical ground uh, to explain photoelectric effect. Actually, when the, from a teaching point of view, the photoelectric effect is more and useful because it leads to experiments like the quantum effect and all that. I mean, uh, Compton effect and all that. And second, most people are familiar with it uh, uh, because all of us know you know, solar panels and all that. And please understand that Einstein uh, arrived at uh, the, uh, uh, the particle theory of light or the existence of light quanta or photon on physical grounds, not mathematics. Okay? But, um, Max Planck wanted it mathematically. Now, what is the difference physically between a wave and a particle? A particle is like a bullet. Uh, the, uh, the transfer of energy is concentrated at one point when it hits, and it's instantaneous. The wave is like a shock wave, or like a tsunami. It's it is spread, you know, it doesn't happen instantaneously. You know beforehand when that it's coming. It travels at a relatively slow speed, and then it is spread over a wide area, its impact. But when you look at photoelectric effect, which was discovered by Hertz, Einstein noticed that the uh, flow of electric current was almost instantaneous and depends on the frequency and not on the intensity of light. Okay. From that, from purely physical grounds, I mean, everywhere, Einstein's insight into physics was truly extraordinary. But, uh, um, even his non Euclidean geometry, it was, he was able to conclude that uh, uh, this, when you drop the principle of equivalence, you will uh, run into non Euclidean geometry. Next, please. So, in the 19th century, Einstein essentially asserted Louis de Broglie postulated the matter also is made up of waves. Uh, this extended duality to matter also. Next, please. Uh -huh. This I have already mentioned. So, on this indirect observation, so we have no pratyaksha knowledge of the in the mechanical science in the quantum world. But you see how extraordinary it is that many of the metaphysical problems that we run into, they have seen through the thought process. You know, that is, uh, not only that, they offer insights. Uh, they, often, uh, they offer insights which may be useful to us. I would not have looked at it, but for that uh, duality statement by uh, Martha. Next. Yeah. But you say indirect observation, so what do you mean by indirect? So if I if I see like this code, right? Mm -hmm. So would you call that direct or indirect? Oh yeah, because you are in the direct, you are in the coherent world. Right, because I'm seeing it with like through the in the visible sure. spectrum. But Absolutely. suppose I like I don't I don't see a code, but suppose I see it through a box with an X-ray in the metal in the airport detector. Do you call that direct or indirect? No, that's also direct. What we are saying is we do not know what we are observing in the quantum world. Okay. The modeling we are doing when you talk about a wave. The phenomena that it produces is a wave-like phenomena in the coherent of the, the real world. That is the issue. We don't know what exactly it is doing. And that, most of the time, it doesn't matter. Because when we observe interference patterns, you know, very often we say X-ray diffraction. We don't see diffraction. What we see is interference. Yeah. So that means we are twice removed. Okay. Mm -hmm. So next, please. Our all levels, mass energy duality is already there. We know that. Okay. Observer, that is, and then observer, observe your in your reality beyond what is observed. That is what they're saying. Okay. And then most classical quantum uh, reality that is there, most the laws of physics are different in the classical and the quantum forms. What Einstein was saying was, I'm not going to say that your physics is wrong. What is the quantum physics? All I'm saying is there has to be a general theory of which this should be a special case. Right now, what we have is an ad hoc kind of an approach. Okay. So notions like motion, position, velocity have no meaning in the quantum world. That we'll get in the answer. Okay, next place. That is better ways. I don't know how they got it. I found it someplace. Next, please. So uh, let me point out one of the fundamental problems. This is a very famous experiment, conceptual experiment, double slip. 
essentially, <coughs> uh, you observe an interference pattern, but the probabilities don't add up to the addition. Mm -hmm. And but something extraordinary, if you put a camera at something which observes these things, then the properties behave as though um, it's correct. I'll give you a simpler example. This next one, please. So uh, this is a simplified example of, suppose we have 100 quantum points which behave like uh, electrons. So, the, so H and the, they should add up to 100, okay? You toss the coin one at a time, toss the coins one at a time, count the number of heads and number of tails, then they should add up to 100. That's the total number of coins. But suppose you toss them two at a time, and then you have 50 pairs of quantum coins, and then you count them, the heads and tails don't add up to 100. Some of them are lost. That's what we call interference. So that's how quantum coins behave. And the curious thing is, if you're observing it, suppose you put a camera or something, um, then they behave properly. Then they add up to your hand. If you have a camera or a, some, a video recorder like this, and then you observe it, those coins add up to one hand. So the question arises, how does the, you see, when you have two this thing, um, that means you don't have one electron going through one hole, another electron going through one hole. The same electron seems to be going through both the holes. Hmm? So and we can derive the wave equation for that. But here also the same thing. But how does the electron know that you are observing it? So it's sort of like school children at an exam. If the teacher is observing it, they don't copy. Okay. So uh, the coins behave the same way. Next well, one, if, if you're not observing, how do you know that they don't sum up to 100? Hmm? No, they don't sum up to 100. If you let them, if you do that, and if there is no observation, at the end of the experiment, you count them, then the, uh, some coins are missing. I mean, it's very easy to calculate the properties in those things. You know, all you do is the wave equation and take the, uh, you know, the square root of the, uh, the absolute value squared. Next one, please. So if we toss the same in 50 pairs, two at a time, some interfere and are lost. If you are watching them with the camera, they, they behave normally. Exactly like school right. children. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? I mean, if they're interfering, then they, will, they should also be observable when you're observing with the camera. Oh, no, when you are observing, they don't interfere. That's the puzzle. Okay. Is it hypothesis? Or is it no, no, that experiment. is experimental result. You see, that's the fundamental problem. Of, uh, that is why uh, Feynman says that double slit experiment tells you everything about quantum physics. It's only a question of interpretation after that. Okay. So these quantum coins are regular regular coins? Or? No, no. I mean, I made it up because, okay. uh, you know, you'd be, instead of electrons, I've used this. But yeah. physically, mathematically, the two problems are the same. Okay. The loss of probability breaks down. Okay. When you said camera, it can be eyes also, even eye. Uh, you may you are observing. For example, you could have quantum school children also. But for example, children who copy an exam when you are not there, and then they don't copy when you are watching them. Okay, that's what that's how these coins, these uh, electrons behave. Like, here, because the watching is very removed, right? Because you, like, if I remember when I read that experiment, it's like they count the electron registers in a Geiger count, counter. Geiger counter on counter. this side. Yeah. So then you have a sort of a, a photo in this side. Yeah. That's always the thing. That's always, it's always the very in there. Yeah, always in there. The yes. question was, what's the difference between observing with the naked eye versus observing the... No, electrons you cannot... You see, quantum coins, I made it up. They don't exist, okay, because it's in the real world. No, not necessarily to do with quantum coins. You had said that when you... Um, observe, you cannot observe them with the naked eye. You have to set up some apparatus, uh, some, some sort of a you know, photoelectric... Uh, some such some such electron detector or something. Uh, 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 we know how to do it, but that experiment has been performed. So that I should refer to more of an electron interference, yeah. not optical. So uh, to make it simpler, my goal is to make it understandable. Uh, oh. this thing. Okay, and so now, even the photo and video camera were illustrations in your experiment. Sure. Okay. okay. So okay. I think the reality that you are talking about is at a very small level, right? Like plants. Oh yeah. Yeah. We are not with me. That's why people sure. think about yeah. it. school children it sort of gets lost. Yeah. We're talking about extremely small things here. Yeah. In the world of the quantum. Yeah. 
<coughs> but then, of course, uh, ultimately, the world is made up of those things. So those effects may still be there. OK? And next, there are two observations. Then how do you consider one as normal, the other abnormal? No, we don't consider them. That is it's saying, if you watch the camera, so they behave normally. And in the sense, they add up to 100. OK? okay? If they that don't add up to 100. That is a criteria for normal. Yeah. Next, please. So this is under uh, So essentially, Schrodinger arrived at this way with the is not here. Uh, it's important to recognize that uh, he did not derive it from fundamentals the way uh, you know Einstein's uh, uh, equations are derived from fundamentals. He just found the wave equation. He took the wave equation, which is very well known, and then fitted data to it and came up with an experiment. Next thing, um, hydrogen wave function. Again, please note that these are simulations. If we don't see them at the level of the hydrogen atom. <coughs> the wave function is not a physical wave like a sound wave or a anything, or a vibration or a seismic wave or anything. It is a mathematical expression that allows calculation of properties of a particle being in a particular state. It's a complex number. And the probability is calculated by multiplying the complex quantity by its conjugate and taking the square root. So that we don't need to. But this probability is not the classical probability of Laplace and Kolmogorov, which we already saw. Because there is no such thing as interference in the Laplacian. Or the so that which shows not only is the physics strange, the mathematical laws, the rules that we use, ultimately the phys physics is when you are studying nature, there is no reason why nature should follow our uh, mathematics. Uh, but uh, the interesting thing is, the mathematics that we have to use in quantum at the quantum level is also different from the mathematics that we use uh, in uh, teaching mathematics. Actually, that is what got me into uh, mathematics. Superposition implies that electrons act as though they are at several places at the same time. So and the wave function gives the probability of finding the electron in this position. You see, a fundamental difference between uh, quantum physics and classical physics is the fact that in quantum physics, you do not have quantities. You don't have, uh, 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 these quantities or objects don't have values. Of what you have are descriptions. And these acquired uh, values only when you make the experiment. Without the experiment, they don't exist. That's the real uh, fundamental measurement problem. And for example, you can, and another problem you have in quantum physics is we can find the probability of an electron, for example, going from here to the moon. Okay? But the point is, that uh, you can write down the wave equation. Right? Okay, the thing is, when you uh, describe it, you describe probabilities in terms of the wave. But it's not the wave so much of the electron as the probability. But you cannot say, for example, an electron from here ends up on the moon. It happens instantaneously. 